Hey YouTubers, this is the Gold Standard Season 924 coming at you with another video for you guys today. It's hard to believe that it's been 20 years since this particular match took place. And this match exemplified just how popular professional wrestling was, especially during that late 90s, early 2000s boom period with the Monday Night Wars between WWF or WWE as we call it nowadays, as well as WCW. Now, when it comes to the summer of 1998, it'll definitely go down as one of the best periods that professional wrestling has ever witnessed. Now, even in the summer of 1998, you know, in WWF, you had Stone Cold being on the rise as WWF champion and his ongoing saga with Mr. McMahon, as well as the Highway to Hell program between Stone Cold and The Undertaker that led to their eventual championship match at SummerSlam. Also, you had the faction feud going on between D-Generation X and the Nation of Domination. But then you get to WCW. Now, they've been riding high off the successful NWO angle where Hulk Hogan showcases true colors. He completely alienates his fans by going over to the dark side and trading in his red and yellow attire in favor of the black and white, being the leader of the NWO, threatening to take over WCW. And they would continue to take over, or at least make attempts to take over WCW throughout the next two to three years. And then we get to 1998. Hulk Hogan, having lost the WCW title over the Sting under dubious circumstances. The NWO is still going on strong, even despite some dissension along the way after Starcade. And then there was a civil war that goes on between Hogan and Nash, and Savage also getting involved in the debacle, which in turn led to the eventual split of two different iterations of the NWO, two different factions. Now, with the red and black, you had the NWO Wolfpack, led by Kevin Nash, along with Conan, Randy Savage, Sting, and Lex Luger. And then Hulk Hogan would continue running his version of the NWO with NWO Hollywood, comprising alongside Scott Hall, Brian Adams, Scott Norton, Scott Steiner, Vincent, the Disciple, who a lot of folks associate him more as the Brutus Beefcake, there was a lot of people in the NWO. There was Kurt Hennig, there was Rick Rude, Miss Elizabeth, uh, Horace Hogan, who was Hulk Hogan's nephew, would also join later on. Yeah, that was also a, a big program that was going on, especially by the time we get to the summer of 1998. But there's also another uh, wrestler that was really riding hot in WCW during this time. And this particular wrestler is none other than as Bobby Heenan would refer to him as the man, Bill Goldberg. Now, in terms of Goldberg's story is concerned, we get to the later half of 1997. Goldberg was just making his in-ring debut. He defeats his first opponent in Hugh Morris. And this would start the infamous undefeated streak that Goldberg would become more synonymous for throughout the rest of his wrestling career, especially going from his debut match and continuing to rack up more victories and just uh, completely decimating his opponents in such short notice. Goldberg would continue riding that momentum going into 1998. His first feud Goldberg would have would be against none other than Raven, who was leading his faction at the time with Raven's flock. So Goldberg would go on to defeat Raven in order to win his first WCW championship, which specifically being the United States heavyweight title. Goldberg would continue riding that momentum with his, you know, with his winning streak by the time you get to July of 1998. Now, the WCW commission at the time, J.J. Dillon, announces on the Thunder Go Home show to uh, Nitro, the Go Home Nitro to Bash at the Beach. So J.J. Dillon makes this uh, announcement at the last moment, 
that Hulk Hogan would be contractually obligated to defend his WCW title against Goldberg at the Georgia Dome. And, you know, the instant when J.J. Dillon just completely made that announcement, the crowd just went crazy. You know, we do get to the July 6th episode of Nitro. It was in the Georgia Dome, 40,000 people. And even watching that Nitro and just... As, or if you, in this case, were one of the people, one of the fans in attendance that were watching the show, or that were there at the show, I should say. I mean, it was just very surreal just looking at uh, just how packed fans were just to witness this particular wrestler who was just seven, eight months into his WCW run, and now he's got the weight of the world, and now he's having this opportunity to take on a big time athlete or a big time, you know, superstar like Hulk Hogan, you know, they were throwing him challenge after challenge. Goldberg had to go through Scott Hall in order to get to Hulk Hogan. And Goldberg does successfully do that. And as far as Hogan's situation is concerned, because he was just coming off of a, you know, a pretty hot program with Sting the previous year, even though he lost the belt, it was only a matter of time before Hogan won the belt back. Goldberg and Hogan were, you know, basically going in this match. I mean, it was just like you couldn't tell who was going to win it because, you know, Goldberg was just, you know, coming in really hot. And, you know, Hogan, I mean, he was, you know, he was already booked to be in a tag team match with uh, Dennis Rodman. And, you know, Hogan and Rodman would be teaming up to take on DDP and Karl Malone. You know, Karl Malone, Dennis Rodman were, uh, you know, two NBA players from opposing sides. You had Rodman in the Chicago Bulls. You had Karl Malone as part of the Utah Jazz. You know, they were uh, involved in the finals of the NBA conference during that time. The Chicago Bulls did, however, won that uh, NBA conference game that year and even though Hogan was booked to be in that match so he wasn't going to defend the title but you know then you get to the go home Nitro and you know Hogan's forced to defend his world title against Goldberg it was very interesting because you couldn't even tell who was going to win or lose this match because Goldberg was just you know he could have gotten DQ'd and even though he would have won the match he still wouldn't have won the title and, you know, Hogan was still, you know, having his thing going on with Diamond Dallas Page. So maybe there there could have been another chance where, you know, maybe there could have been a DDP Hogan program for uh, maybe the next pay-per-view after Bash at the Beach. The match, I mean, it, it was a it was given a reasonable amount of time. It didn't go on for long, but it didn't need to be. And the crowd was, you know, really on fire just to see these two superstars just locking up. It was just Goldberg being Goldberg, being this fan favorite monster just going at it against Hogan's cowardliness. So you know Goldberg is not gonna, you know, gonna back out of a fight and he's not gonna, you know, let Hogan just get away leaving the match still the WCW champion. Vince I think it was Vincent that came out or one of the NWO members came out there. And then, you know, Carmelone also interfered in that match. He even gave a diamond cutter. You know, the crowd was just eating it up. They were just throwing all sorts of garbage. You know, Hulk Hogan was still dazed and he was like staggering around, allowing Goldberg to get that opportunity to spear Hogan. Well, Goldberg finishes Hogan off with the jackhammer. One, two, three. Goldberg becomes the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. You know, the crowd pops and there's just all this confetti flying. There's all these pyros erupting. It was just such a great moment. You know, Goldberg just coming in, for, you know, seven, eight months into his WCW run and over time, in such a short amount of time, would become the most over superstar that the company ever had. And there has been debate over the years where or not Goldberg versus Hogan could have been on pay-per-view as far as that's concerned. And I, I could definitely understand where folks are coming from. I mean, you know, especially if you look into a business person's perspective and just how, how much money that Goldberg versus Hogan would have had if it had been on a pay-per-view. And, you know, particularly like a big name pay-per-view like, you know, Super Brawl or uh, Bash at the Beach since that was coming up or even Starcade. You know, Starcade was the biggest uh, WCW event that 
they've produced next to WrestleMania to what WWE was producing. But I I think for what it was, I think it really did well. I mean, it did drew a really big rating that night. They would continue that uh, for the next few months or so. But once Goldberg lost the WCW world title, definitely, you know, Goldberg never managed to recover from that same ride and popularity that he had in 1998. And, you know, it's just hard to believe that he only held that WCW title like once. But he would win the the world heavyweight title once he went to the WWE in 2003. By that point, I think it was just, it was really far too late in his career at this point. Um, it just wasn't the same. Now, I know originally what they were going to do was like once Kevin Nash won the WCW title from Goldberg, he, from all the dubious finishes from Star K98 with Scott Hall and using the taser on Goldberg and then Nash taking advantage to you know win the match and the title alone. So originally they were going to have Goldberg go after the newly formed NWO elite, basically having the Wolfpack Hollywood, you know, basically push the reset button and have the two factions back together. And they were going to have Goldberg go through all the key important uh, NWO members. And by the time that Goldberg you know, tried to get his hands on Kevin Nash. Unfortunately, you know, Hogan had to take time off due to a knee injury. And, you know, a lot of the members of the NWO, especially some of the big time members, were already getting injured. There were, there were some factors as well, like, you know, even the change in direction in the storylines, the booking whatsoever. So unfortunately, that Goldberg versus the NWO angle was never resolved. I think that also um, led to... WCW's downfall, which you know, it's just hard to believe because if you watch like WCW in 98 and then you watch WCW in 99, like especially if you watch the Nitros from the Georgia Dome in July of 98 and July of 99, it's it's just astounding just to see how much it's just how night and day that WCW was at that time and you know, they just never really seemed to regain the momentum that they had from the summer of 98. And to me, that's really where WCW hit its peak in terms of uh, financial popularity is concerned. And it's it just baffles me just watching some of those old Nitros. But um, all negativity aside, it did drew big rating that night, and it would continue to draw a couple more uh, big ratings uh, the next month with the Ultimate Warriors return. And... You know, the Four Horsemen also reuniting for a bit, as well as the Goldberg DDP uh, match that they showed from Halloween Havoc that because of the uh, debacle that happened where the feed was cut out and then they had to show the Goldberg DDP match uh, that was cut off from the pay-per-view feed on Monday Nitro. But other than that, I mean, that was really the last time WCW was really, you know, as far as WCW Nitro is concerned, that they really um, drew bigger ratings compared to WWE. I mean, I'm very content with Goldberg, you know, winning the WCW title, even if it was on free TV. Yeah, Goldberg winning the WCW title did really bring a feel-good moment. See how popular Goldberg was and how much momentum that WCW was getting and just really how amazing professional wrestling was at that time. And it's a shame we'll never have that same sort of magic happen again, um, especially in this age of, you know, social media. That's really my thoughts on the Goldberg versus Hogan match 20 years later. Let me know what your thoughts are regarding about the match. What was your reaction when you first watched this match when, you know, when it was on TNT? I would love to hear some of your thoughts. And thank you all guys for watching. Till next time, this is the Gold Standard Caesar 924 signing out.